Thank you for watching this video on the ICICation YouTube channel. Please feel free to leave comments or to subscribe to this channel. Thank you. This tutorial was created with Blender 4.0, but it applies to graphics software in general also. About a month ago, I noticed an issue with a simple plane I was trying to deform. I wanted to raise the center vertex to create a pyramid shape, but some of the corners were flat. After quite a bit of messing with it, I finally realized the cause was incorrect geometry and was something I already knew how to avoid. I felt stupid, but then I saw others wrestling with the same issue. Sometimes we just need to think about what we are trying to do from the geometry's point of view. Always remember that good geometry is vital to the success of an object. Many graphics software uses triangles as the basis of processing a mesh, so quads or ingons are seen as a set of triangles, even if there are no internal edges defined. There is a good reason for this. A triangle has three vertices, three edges, and one face. It is guaranteed to be planar, which means a flat two-dimensional surface. Thus, it can be easily plotted for display. Quads and ingons are not guaranteed to be planar. These can have a variety of irregular shapes, and each vertices can be on a different plane. So in order to plot the flat face surface, it needs to be split into planar triangles. Consider this planar n-gon with no internal edges. Note how it can be carved into triangles for processing. The blue lines represent possible divisions. This is just one of many ways to break it into triangles, though. A common way of doing this is to pick a vertex and then follow edges to the previous and next vertex, checking normals to ensure the three vertices form a triangle inside of the face. That plane, planar triangular portion can now be plotted. Then adjoining triangles can also be plotted in the same way, until the surface is completely plotted. Notice that many of the vertices of this non-planar n-gon have several edges tied to them. Thus, when a vertex is raised, it may look much different than we expect because the software calculated edges rather than our defining the internal edges to tell the software how we want it to deform. We start with a square plane which is subdivided once, creating four quad faces and nine vertices on the same plane. A planar surface is easy to fill in. But then the center vertex is raised. The goal is to have a pyramid shape simulated with the green notation line. This causes the plane to no longer be planar, so now the software has to calculate slopes. The problem is clearly shown here using a red notation line. Two corners look fine, but the other two are bent too sharply and have a flat corner. Notice that the bad bend is where there is no physical edge. For each quad face, there are three vertices on the same plane, and the center vertex is not. If we draw a straight line between the center vertex and each other vertex, we get the desired shape, but there are no physical edges from the center vertex to any corner vertex, so these quads have to be split into triangles for processing. So if the first vertex chosen is the center or corner, then the vertices mid-side will be the other points of the triangle. This will produce the bad bend by implying an edge between those vertices without considering the remaining vertex. But if the first vertex chosen is a mid-sized vertex, then the center and corner vertices will be the other points of the triangle. This will produce the proper bend by implying an edge between the center and corner vertices. So with just a subdivided plane, we have a 50% chance of a planar face, the one that we desire, and a 50% chance of a bent face. Quality geometry clearly defines instructions of how we want the surfaces to act. We need to include enough geometry to do this, but we try to avoid useless geometry as that inflates the project's file size. Ironically, just subdividing our plane only created geometry that did not produce a quality result. 
Furthermore, subdividing and also adding center to corner edges to fix the flat corners yields 50% more useless geometry over just having center to corner edges. The four edges from center to mid side are no longer useful as the triangles from center to two corners provides good data for the desired planar faces. The best choice would be the plane with only center to corner edges. It also yields the fewest vertices and edges of all the planes we have seen in these examples, so the better quality geometry also requires less data storage space. Note these examples are very simple planes. Imagine if we had a complex quad mesh with various vertex raised. This is actually a very likely occurrence when objects are constantly being deformed by editing or various modifiers being applied. In summary, we must remember the following key points to avoid having poor quality results such as shown now. Always consider effects of triangular processing, especially if the mesh is mostly quad or ingon. Well-defined geometry will behave as planned, without software guessing. Well-defined geometry may yield less object data over just subdividing a large face. Simply subdividing an object is not always the best solution. In fact, it did not make any difference for our flat corner issue. Using a shade smooth operation only visually corrects the problem. It does not fix the actual geometry. Using a subdivision surface modifier can add a lot of extra geometry. First, make sure that the problem cannot be solved by just manually adding a few instructional edges where truly needed. I hope this helps you to create more precise objects instead of the that looks about right methods. Thank you for watching.